happen. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. That should take care about everybody. Jim here, also known as Mr. Batman. I want to say hello to all the boys and girls, Jews and Gentiles, and everybody else who's confused about which one you happen to be. I want to share some information with you. You know, um, I've been a, a proclaimer of the gospel for many years, decades now. And, you know, we've always kind of proclaimed the gospel like the Romans road. You simply got to have um, a knowledge of God and move from there. But that's not the gospel. Then so you'll have some people that'll tell you, oh, my goodness, uh, the gospel is that Jesus died on the cross. While that is an integral part, it is not the gospel. While that's very good news because that pays for the gospel. That is not the gospel. The gospel is John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. You see, we have an olive tree. What does the olive tree represent? The olive tree represents Israel. Do you know that every promise, every covenant, every single one of them is given to Israel? Israel, the descendants of Israel, the children of Abraham, the children of Jacob, and that the bride of the Messiah, that her name is Israel. And Jesus even said, if you're not grafted into Israel, that is, uh, he said, I've only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not the house of the Baptists, the house of the Catholics, the house of, mm -mm, nope. There's no such houses. As a matter of fact, when heaven makes itself known, heaven, the new Jerusalem, comes down from the heavens and we enter it through the 12 gates. What's that? The 12 tribes of Israel. If you're not part of Israel, you're not grafted in. You're not saved. So what is the good news? If these things that we look at and have looked at for quite a bit, uh, are not the good news, then what is? The good news is exactly what Jesus preached when he started his ministry. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance. What is that? It means you turn from your wicked ways and you do something different. You do it better. You follow the rules, the regulations, the laws. But what laws? Therein lies the problem. So here's why this particular way of sharing the gospel is so powerful. It's very explanatory and makes sense of everything that we see in the scripture. And again, if it's not scripture, if it's not in the scripture, I want no part of it. Do not add to or take away from scripture. So what is the good news? The good news is that anybody can be grafted in to Israel. Yes, anybody can be. Look at when Egypt, uh, excuse me, Israel was brought out of Egypt. Moses brings Israel out of Egypt. So did you have one country coming out of another country? No, you had a nation of people coming out of sin. And so when they did that, the mixed multitude came with. Uh-oh, Moses turned around and said, hey, God, I got this problem. All these people are following me with all their stuff. What do I do? God says to Moses, tell them if they will keep my Sabbaths and obey my righteous rulings, then they will be my people. If this, then that. Good. Now we know how you can become Israel. Anybody can become Israel. What is Israel supposed to look like? Israel is the one who is given the, uh, the scrolls, the law, the Torah. So how do you share the gospel? Well, here we go. You see, the gospel is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and preface this. You're going to hear me say this quite a bit. The Jesus Christ of churchianity, that guy will send you straight to hell. The Jesus Christ of the Bible, his name is Yeshua. He is the true Messiah. Excuse me. Allergies and everything else going on. But anyway, so... Yeshua is the door 
John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's also the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, so he's the door. Now, Jesus has done everything he had to do. That's why he said it is finished. Not everything is finished, but it is his portion of that job is finished. Everything he needed to do while he was wearing the flesh suit, he did. That's why his job was finished, that portion of it. Okay, so um, now we've got the gospel. We've got Jesus doing everything he needs to do to do what? To provide salvation for every person who's ever lived, whoever will live. Now, this is not universal, everybody goes to heaven stuff. No, but you're provided with an opportunity for salvation. What's that mean? Well, the Bible says that there's two paths. There's the broad path that leads to destruction and damnation. That's the road to hell. And then there's the narrow path. The narrow path is difficult. It's hard to find. Few people will even find it because they're not looking. So um, the narrow path is obedience to God completely. And that is walking out the Torah. You know, in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning of verse 10, it says, we are his workmanship. Whose? Jesus' workmanship. How do you know? Because it says so in the very next words. It created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Every place it says, walk as Jesus walks, live as Jesus lived his life here in the flesh suit. We're, that's our example. So obedience to keep that Torah gets you on the narrow path to the door. But if you're not on that narrow path, you're on the broad path, you're not going to get to the door. So why is this so important to understand? Because we are created for good works of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And notice, I'm going to always try and, my best. I'm, I'm going through some stuff right now medically, so I'm having a hard time with numbers. But I'm always going to try my best to give you a GPS location. God's perfect scripture book, chapter and verse. And God's scripture, God's word, the Holy Bible is just that. It is God's word and you can trust it. It's perfect. Perfect things don't ever change. So here is the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus died to pay the price so you could have an opportunity at salvation. Now, what do you got to do? You got to accept that that's what he did. And now you got to get on the path. You got to repent from walking on the broad way. You got to repent from that broad path and come back. Do you know that's grace? That's merited favor. You'll hear a lot of people, especially Baptists, they'll tell you that grace is unmerited favor. I used to be a Baptist pastor. I know <laughs> I used to say the same darn thing. But then when you do a study on that, you'll find that's not the case. Mercy is free. Mercy is not asked for, or deserved, or, or uh, it's not a reward. But grace is. Grace is merited favor. Grace, God looks on you with grace, with favor, when you turn from your wicked ways and come back to him. Look at the prodigal son. Exactly. That's it. So turn from your wicked ways. But how do you do that? What's wicked? You cannot know what sin is without the Torah. Now, people are going to say, oh, Mr. Batman, you're one of those legalists. See the tassels. Oh, yeah, he wears the zeet zeets. I bet he doesn't eat the piggy. Nope, I don't. I bet he keeps the Sabbath. Yep. By the way, Shabbat Shalom. Today is Sabbath. So, um, yeah, I'm a legalist because Jesus was a legalist. My God is a legalist. He gives us a law. It's a blessing. Don't act like it's going to hurt you. It's a blessing if you will keep it. It's only a curse when you don't. So if you're going to share the gospel with somebody, share the aspect of it that shows that anybody can be saved. Anybody can get the mercy of God. The grace of God is earned. It's a reward. We are called to be overcomers. It says the one who overcomes shall be saved. Oh, the one who endures till the end shall 
be saved. Do you know what the difference is between a living sacrifice and a dead sacrifice? A living sacrifice can crawl down off that altar whenever it gets too hot or uncomfortable. A dead sacrifice cannot. That's why the Bible tells us we are to be living sacrifices. We are to be willing to live our lives according to God's Torah, His instructions, to the letter. Okay, great. And people are okay with not uh, killing. Great, because they don't want to be killed. Don't lie. don't want to be lied to. Don't sleep with my wife. I don't like that either. Yeah, they're all good with the big things because everybody can see them and they hurt other people. But what about the little things? God says, those who are faithful with a little will be faithful with much. And he wants to trust you with much. So, do you think it matters to God what you put in your mouth? How you eat? Why, yes, it does. In Leviticus 11, God gives us the com complete, not all of it, but part of it is right there. Most of it is uh, the food regulations. There's also Deuteronomy 14. But also, uh, when you get past Leviticus 11, get right around Leviticus 11, 40, I believe, 42. He's done with the food, what is and is not food. And what are the next words out of God's mouth? Be holy as I am holy. I want you to think about something. What was the very first sin? Yes, it was rebellion against God. I agree. But what did they do? Huh. They ate something they were not supposed to eat. In the Bible, the metaphor for eating is taking in teaching or uh, preaching that you're not supposed to eat. If you're taking in teaching and preaching that tells you it's okay to eat the piggy and break the Sabbath, they're just wrong. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to run out and quit keeping uh, or quit eating the piggy and quit keeping the Sabbath. That's not what I'm saying. It's not my job to judge anybody. But I'm saying right now that the Bible is completely consistent. There is no contradictions in the scripture. It does not say one thing in the Old Testament and something new in the New Testament. And the reason that is. Because Yeshua himself said, I have come to bring nothing new, only the words my father has given me. Only. Yeah. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Why does he say that? My commandments. Because he's the one that gave them to us at Mount Sinai. Jesus also tells us that no one has heard or seen the father, only the son who proceeds from the father. Okay. Well, then who was given the commandments? Who was calling down the commandments in uh, Exodus? Yeshua was. Who sat down with, for lunch with Abraham? Yeshua did. So, again, you want to keep God's commandments? Keep all of them. Oh, and by the way, what you eat is super important, but also what day you worship is super important. Why does God want this? That you should worship on particular days. Because he wants people to come into the forever kingdom who he loves, who loves him, who want to do the things that he does the way that he does them on the days that he does them. He wants people that are in complete harmony with him. No, he doesn't want little automatons. He wants people who will love him in their obedience, but still have their own personality. Think about that, because he wants people to live with him forever. So the law about keeping the Sabbath is there because it is a covenant sign. It's a sign of the covenant that you are part of the body of believers, the congregation of Israel, the assembly of Israel. You know, the word church wasn't even created until around 340, 350 A.D., yeah, it's assembly, it's the congregation, it's Israel. Israel is mentioned 3,000 times in the Bible. Church is like 70. Which one do you think God wants to talk about more? Israel is his bride. So, repent, turn from your wicked ways, metanoia in the Greek, teshuva in the Hebrew, 
literally means 180 degrees about face. You're going to go the other direction now. Turn from your wicked ways. You've been deceived. Okay, here's what's happened. You've been deceived. The word deceived in Greek that's used there that's translate deception is planao. And that's where we get the word planet because they're wandering stars. How do they wander? They just wander off the path. It's not like you go ah, 90 degrees, I'm out of here. No, 90%, 99% of people don't do that. They wander off a little bit at a time. And so now you've been deceived. Now it's your task to look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh my goodness, I'm not doing this right. I need to metanoia, come back to the path. That path is Torah. Come back and get the grace that God wants to look on you with favor. That's what this means, to look on with favor. God wants to look on you with favor like the prodigal son and wrap his arms around you and say, come on in, boy. That's grace. He's already given you the mercy if you've accepted him in your life and want to live your life for him. Really, acceptance is irrelevant. You have to desire and love him. That's not acceptance. That's something totally different because love is a verb. Love is something you do. Love is not a feeling. So, boys and girls, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you answer any questions you might have. Um, I am Jim, also known as Mr. Batman. Actually, it's the other way around. I'm Mr. Batman, also known as Jim. And if you like, you can reach out to me at 502-354-8699. Also at MrBatman.com. Yes, that is my very own website where I teach science and apologetics for all ages. And I'll also be happy to help you in any way I can. God bless and have a great day.